Hi, and welcome back to First Year Microeconomics. We've looked at the equilibrium price for a market. In this presentation, we're going to start looking at how our price predictions change when something else changes. Formally, this is called the study of comparative statics. Comparative because we're going to be comparing different equilibria. Statics because we're not going to ask how the market moves between the initial price and the final price. We're simply going to look at how our equilibrium or our price prediction changes. Just a reminder of what our demand curve shows. Remember, demand curves answer the question, given the price, how much would buyers like to buy, holding everything else constant? What is our something else that changes when we're talking about comparative statics? Well, it's going to be one of these everything else constant things. When we drew our demand curve, we did so holding the price of other goods constant, the income of buyers constant, buyers' tastes were held constant, and also buyers' expectations were held constant. So, what we're now going to do in our comparative statics is to ask what happens to our predicted price, what happens to our equilibrium price, when one of these other things, price of other goods, income, tastes, or expectations, when one of those other things changes. Now, there are lots of possibilities here. When we're talking about income, it could go up or down. When we're talking about tastes, you could become more positive about a good or become more negative. When you're talking about the price of other goods, well, you have substitutes and complements. If the price of a substitute goes up, that will have a different effect to if the price of a complement goes up. So we're going to show comparative statics through a series of examples. Our first example is going to be a rise in the price of a substitute. Back in the mid-2000s, Cyclone Yazi destroyed the banana crop in northern Queensland. What did that do? Well, that had the effect of shifting the supply curve for bananas to the left. It pushed up the price of bananas. You should be able to show this on a diagram, by the way. And if you're not sure, stop this presentation right now and have a shot. But in this example, we're not going to think about the price of bananas directly. We're going to ask the simple question, what happened to the price of apples when Cyclone Yazi destroyed the banana crop? Now, before Cyclone Yazi, the price of apples, let's say, was about $6 per kilogram. That was our equilibrium price, or our predicted price, and there were about 30 million kilograms of apples sold each day in Australia. We need to note that in Australia, bananas and apples tend to be substitutes for each other. What does this mean? Well, if bananas and apples are substitutes, this means that a rise in the price of bananas will mean that at any given price for apples, buyers would like to buy more apples. Or in other words, in terms of our diagram, the demand curve for apples is going to shift to the right. At any price, buyers will want to buy more apples than when the price of bananas was low. So here we've drawn our new situation. Our new demand curve, D1, is the demand for apples given that the price of a substitute, the price of bananas, is higher than before. The price of bananas is our something else that we're changing. That's led to a rightward shift in the demand curve for apples. And this changes our prediction about the price of apples. Our new equilibrium price is up here at $10 per kilogram for apples. And at that price, buyers now want to buy more apples than they did before. So our comparative statics result, or our prediction, is that given that apples and bananas are substitutes, if there is a rise in the price of bananas, for example because of a cyclone, that will lead to a rise in the price of apples and an increase in the amount of apples sold. 
in the market in Australia. Both the price of apples and the quantity of apples transacted will go up when the price of bananas goes up. People sometimes get confused by this result. Both price and quantity demanded have gone up. Why? Because we haven't shifted along the original demand curve. Rather, the rise in the price of bananas has shifted the entire demand curve for apples to the right. So we've had an increase in our predicted price and an increase in our predicted quantity. And that's in fact what happened in Australia when Cyclone Yazi destroyed the banana crop. The second thing to note is that we haven't talked at all about how the price rose. But that's built into our dynamic assumptions. At the old price of $6 per kilogram for apples, the supply of apples, the amount sellers wish to sell, is still fixed at 30 million kilograms per day. But demand has now increased. There is an excess demand for apples, and it's that excess demand that pushes the price up to reach the new price of, in our example, $10 per kilogram of apples. Our second example of comparative statics will be a change in expectations. This is another real story. Back in the mid-1990s, there was an outbreak in the United Kingdom of what's commonly known as mad cow's disease. Oprah Winfrey had an interview with a leading scientist from the UK talking about mad cow's disease on her extremely popular daytime television show. What happened to the US beef market? Let's start by looking at the United States beef market before Oprah Winfrey aired her interview on US television. The price of beef was, let's say, around $24 per kilogram, and there was perhaps 30 million kilograms of beef sold per day in the United States. So we have our initial equilibrium here, our initial equilibrium price, and our initial equilibrium quantity. Back in the mid-1990s, Oprah Winfrey, who's pictured here in the top right-hand corner of the slide, was the most popular talk show host on United States television. And here's a bit of a transcript from her show aired on April 15th, 1996. The lead-in said, Mad Cow's Disease. It's a medical mystery spreading panic across the Atlantic. McDonald's and Burger King in England have stopped selling British beef. During the interview, Oprah said things such as, to the scientist, you said this disease could make AIDS look like the common cold. Needless to say, that put people in the United States off their beef. This change in expectations, i.e. that you might have a Big Mac of death, shifted the demand curve for beef from D0 back to the left to D1. Or in other words, given the price, consumers wish to purchase less beef at any price. What did this do to our equilibrium? Well, our new equilibrium price is down here at $8 per kilogram, and our new equilibrium quantity is a much lower 10 million kilograms of beef per day. So our prediction is that Oprah's comments on US talk show led to a big decrease in the price of beef and a massive fall in the sales of beef. And that's exactly what happened in the United States after her comments. So what was the outcome of all of this? The beef farmers took Oprah to court and they lost. They also lost an awful lot of money. They were selling beef a lot cheaper, and they were selling a lot less of it. So, we've now seen two examples of comparative statics. Both have involved shifts in the demand curve. There are lots of other examples. You can look at changes in income, changes in the price of complements, and so on. I suggest you have a go at these. However, it's time for us to move on. We're going to look now at an example of a shift in the supply curve. Talk to you soon.